evening and welcome to Encounter, a program which comes to you under the auspices of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies, the St. Vincent Grandees District. And once again, we count it a privilege to be here with you and to be sharing with you. And uh, we trust that you would stay with us because we do have an interesting program for you this evening. Now, we give God thanks for his goodness. The Bible says in everything we must give uh, God thanks. And so as you think of it, we understand the climate we are in at this point in time. Uh, I believe it was Bishop, maybe around August, September, thereabout, um, we were boasting, we had immunity um, towards the coronavirus. We didn't have a problem, but now we are seeing spikes of it. And uh, we want to say to people, we, we have to be real here. Um, you know, the measurements, the protocols and so forth that we are asked to abide with, let's be obedient. And we are appealing to pub the public at large. Um, one person would say, John Public. Uh, you think of it, you pass through Kingston now, a lot of people are using their masks, um, social distancing, it's a, um, a reality. And then you think of um, our hygienic approach to, you know, all that we are doing. We need to wash our hands properly before we just put the liquid in the palm of our hands and rub it together and that's it. Now the crevices, you know, you, you've got to do a thorough job. And I believe with all my heart, this too will pass. And so how we deal with it now, we determine, um, I, I can't be wrong, Bishop, but you know, this too, how we handle it will determine how soon we get out of this phase. And so, as I said, it could be a challenge, but nevertheless, we want to give God thanks for our nurses, our doctors, those in the pharmacies who are working overtime. Um, we thank you for the work you are doing, and we are praying for you that God will continue strengthening you. And we know um, there is a spin-off. We, we thank God for many others who are involved. Uh, we may not call your name, but thank God for you. And we are praying that we would all work together to, to be safe in St. Vincent and the Grandids. All right, so at this time, I'm going to ask our General Bishop to bring greetings. All right, so good evening. And... Uh... I hope that you are staying above all that is going on. And, and we must all admit that quite a lot is happening mm -hmm. right now in our nation. And uh, when, when you think of it, the, the, the spread of that virus, the coronavirus, into our communities. And then we, last week, our first death. Um, and those numbers um, keep just climbing. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, folks are still um, coming down with dengue fever. Mm. And uh, we continue to monitor very closely what's happening at La Soufre. It's quite, quite something mm -hmm. for the nation to deal with. Schools are... Uh, um, on whole, as it were, indefinitely, and uh, must now learn online, virtual learning, mm -hmm. and you know we have we have so much, and I am I'm really calling on all all a l l all Vincentians to make available your resources to helping this nation at this time. So if it is helping children um, with a device so that they could learn, they could get online um, with it, the corporate world, um, our telecommunication companies, all of us could contribute towards this. I, I think I am, I am really hearing and uh, it's not good. You're hearing the bickering. Mm -hmm. the, the bickering has started as to who is doing it well and who is not doing it better. I, I, feel, I feel we need to collaborate because it's obvious that 
you know, you, you have to look at some best practices as to how best could we deal with this thing. So, you know, the debate now about whether mask should be mandatory, um, whether we should cut, shut down. I, I feel we will come up with the correct answer if we collaborate, mm -hmm. if we put together all the people in the medical, people in the business sector, the, uh, parents, teachers, mm -hmm. if all of us come together, government, opposition, we will come up with, a, I believe, uh, a more excellent way mm -hmm. than when we start shouting across flow to each other. I, I, I feel that we need to we need to be talking to each other and we need to be listening. I, we are, we are, this country is in too much danger for these issues to be politicized. And nobody gonna get encounter to join any of your side. Encounter is saying to everybody, stop it. Stop it. We are under, uh, you know, the threats that we have, we have to live with and we have to face. We really, really need to, to, to listen to one another and talk to one another so that we could come up with, a, with, with um, some strategies to deal with this. I would, however, <laughs> I would, however, endorse the wearing of the mask. Mm -hmm. I would say to, to you, listen, if, you're, if you have to leave your home, I, I must say that, if you have to leave your home, because we know you have to work, so you, you would have to work. You have to go and shop here and there and all of that. And, and be smart. Be smart if you, if, you, if you have the means, maybe shop for three months. So you don't have to mingle. I, you know, I, and I, listen, I am not coming from the point of your fear. No. I am coming from the point of view of love. Love your neighbors, you love yourself. This virus is deadly. And anything that we could do to stop the spread of it, we should be willing to pay the price because, and, and as you said rightfully, mm -hmm. how long this stay mm -hmm. um, depends yes. to us. And mm -hmm. uh, we really, really need to do this. However, you know, I want to, in the midst of all this gloom, um, I want to celebrate some good news. I want to celebrate with the, with the young man, Damian McTeer, um, journalist. Um, he was the, um, one of the valedictorian at the um, last graduation they held somewhere last week of the UWI. I think he's um, from Mona, Mona campus. Did extremely well. Um, so Damian, we're very, very proud of you. Very proud. And I, I think I, I am I'm doubly proud because I dedicated this, this, little, this little fella here some years ago. And I have a, I have a, I have a my long-term memory is real good. And I still, I still could see myself at the altar there in the Loam and Seal New Testament Church of God and holding this little fella and offering him up in dedication. We, we, we're very proud of you and all of us who come out of the Loam and Seal area, um, proud of you guys. Good job and um, it's good to hear good news among all the sad news that we are going through at this time. All right, so what we have taken a line um, from last week to sort of speak to you as all of us go through um, the, the, the threats of COVID-19, dengue fever, and uh, the effusive eruption of La Soufrère. And we want to speak to your emotional health because that's very very important and we we are looking at your COVID-19 and La Soufrère anxieties worries fears depression if you some people 
maybe, and your stress. And last week, we start looking at your COVID-19 and loss of prayer anxieties. And life, you know, life sometimes throw you, throw you some, some, we normally see some curveball, mm -hmm. um, some skitters that you, you just can't, you just can't play. And uh, I, I just could imagine, you know, the people in the, in the, um, the, the red zone of our island and you have to go to sleep every night. Um, and, and last week, you must have seen those, those pictures that were posted by Nemo with the, the volcano glowing. And the scientists did say that as the dome grows, uh, we are not seeing it gl glowing because it's too low. But as the thing gets closer to the surface, on a very clear night, you're going to see the glow. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I'm certain there are a number of persons who are very, very anxious. Now, there is normal anxiety. Mm -hmm. But when, you know, our stress, and we could look at, we could look at anxiety in this regard as internalized stress. Mm -hmm. It is stress that we have we have directed on the inside and uh, the fact that we have no control we feel we 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 feel we're in a situation that listen we we are out how do we how do we control this a microscopic um virus that is spreading rapidly across the the island mm -hmm. um the magma and lava is still um, emitting from, from, from our volcano. Um, mosquitoes are, are still plaguing some of us. And, and so we, 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 you know, that level of control that we, uh, we, we normally have, we do not have it. But you know, when, when that level of stress is internalized it is not easily detected mm -hmm. but eventually it will manifest itself in the, in our body physically mm -hmm. and and so the mind you you will see that your your mind will spin meaning for some people you can't concentrate you can't focus the mind looking like it's spinning and uh, the so the spinning mind and then the racing heart mm -hmm. you, you, your palms will will sweat you will breathe heavily mm -hmm. um, and then your your tightening stomach people say you know butterfly down there uh, um, these these are all signals that we are not handling our stress level correctly. But there's a there's a word in the Bible. There's a there's a good antidote for for your for your stress. Is in the book of First Peter five and and seven in the New International Version says, "Cast all your anxiety on Him." Because he cares for you. He cares for you. What a wonderful promise mm -hmm. in the word of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible acknowledges that we'll get anxious. Mm -hmm. There are some threats out there. And to some people, the threat is overwhelming them. The Bible says, cast it. Don't internalize it anymore. Cast it on Jesus. All right, so Bishop? Yes. <laughs> no, I, I, why I'm smiling? Because <laughs> even the, when you talk about the, the attack that we'll have, it's a similar um, thing I've been looking at because it's really an unnerving and uneasy time for anyone. I mean, um, Saturday, when I got the call, it was like 
something is going on, something is happening with La Sufri. So, you know, you sit there and you say, okay, spike in COVID, um, La Sufri now, mm -hmm. you know, and you could imagine what people are going through, yes. especially those living close by, yes. you know. But um, we are told, based on the statistics, America has something like 40 million people who experience anxiety, and we're not talking about just the... The, the, because we, we can't categorize it. Right. You know, every day sometimes you go through some things and you experience it, mm -hmm. but it's dealt with. But one person put it like this, something like, you know, over a six-month period of time, there are some people, they are going through this, and it's not healthy for them, you know, so we understand that. But the point is, when you look at the Psalms, you know, um, yes, that First Peter 5, 7, we need to cast our cares upon him. Mm -hmm. And that is something we we need to do all the time because there are so many things in this world and in this life can create anxiety. Yes. You know, even though as, as preachers and believers, we try to display an attitude, you know, or we try to look as though nothing can bother us. But there are times you, you get there, but we don't allow it to prolong. But um, you think of David. And uh, it, to me, was really an anxious moment for him mm -hmm. when he had to run, flee from Saul. Right. Um, you think of it, you're so faithful to this guy. And if Saul had gotten him, if Saul had gotten to a point where, you know, David was in front of him, he would have killed David, you know. And so David ran and he ran from this guy. The Bible tells us with Daniel when Daniel saw the vision and what was going to happen, Daniel fainted, he collapsed, you know. And so anxiety is something that we know about, you know. It's not that we are obliv oblivious or anything about it. But Matthew 11 and verse 28, it tells us, Jesus tells us to come to him with our burdens. If you are weary, <laughs> oh my, you know, you can't help, but, you know, you think of it, you're weary, come to him, you know. Um, then you have Matthew 6, 25 to 26. And in these verses, Jesus seemed to indicate Christians really, you know, we worry about a lot of things in life. And the next time we will talk about that uh, worries. But the point about it is God is in control. I like um, the Psalms 46 where the psalmist said is our refuge and our strength and we really really have to depend upon him at this time so all in all as i said we go through a lot in life we face anxieties but the fact is we have to learn to trust god that is the only one because some things we really don't know how to deal with them how do you stop the um last suffering how do you what to do? Is there something we can do? Puncture it, uh, drill a hole in the earth and everything. How do you deal with that? You know, and so there are some things you really, really, if you worry, if you're anxious about it, it's, it's just, it's just going to destroy you. It's going to, in some, some persons would say it would kill you and nothing would change. So we have to really put our trust and our confidence in God. So, Mm -hmm. um, so what we want to, you to focus on mm -hmm. is that, you know, sometimes we'd say that the, the COVID-19, the situation, the volcano, that in itself okay. is, is not what is really causing you to become anxious. You know. It is your interpretation of, of these events. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, you know, as as counselor, we we, we we talk about you know about people's irrational thoughts. It is how you think. It is in the thinking, uh, and and that is so important. The thinking, examine, examine the thoughts, the thinking, because you, when you think of it, what could we do? There are some things we can't do. Right. You really, if you worry, 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 would that stop the volcano? No. You worry, 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 come anxious, 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 until, oh my God, you freak out. Mm -hmm. 
that's not going to do anything to the virus. So it is, it is how you are interpreting these events. And it is the, the beliefs, the, the thinking that is, that is making you anxious. And if you don't believe me, then look at what Proverbs 23 and 7 says. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. And to, to give you a little interpretation of that verse, as a man think, thinks the, in, the, in the Hebrew is, means to, to open. It, it means to split open or to act as a gatekeeper. So look at, look at the mind. It is about what you open your mind to will cause a particular thinking. You open your mind to some ideas, then it affects your thought because you realize we are the product mm -hmm. of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Everything really begins with a thought, you know. Mm -hmm. It is the things that we believe will control us, you know. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily things that are true. Mm -hmm. If we believe a lie, to be true, it controls you. Mm -hmm. And I would ask us at this time, be careful what you, you're putting into your mind. And a part of sometimes, part of some people's anxiety is information overload. Mm -hmm. And it's because we have WhatsApp and, and all of this quick yeah. means of communication. People just, some, somebody go down in the volcano and I, I don't yeah. know why you will want to go down into that volcano there. I really don't know. I, I re, and I don't want to see the pictures of those who go down there. Hmm. When we in the media post their pictures, what we are actually, we are endorsing their silliness. Mm -hmm. We have enough pictures from the scientists there. Mm -hmm. And avoid information overload. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to shut down the WhatsApp and shut down them thing. They're making you anxious. But let me, let me just um, ask, let's put something in here. Now, I understand the interpretation mm -hmm. is the problem. Now, a lot of folks, their reference point mm -hmm. is what happened in 1979. Right. When this thing blew and uh, the amount of lives were in jeopardy, the, you know, the movements and, mm -hmm. you know, the, what, what they went through. Then you are watching news channels and you see what is happening in America because of COVID, you get this, it's almost like a death sentence. Right. People saw it. So, you know, looking at, um, listening to what you're saying, people are seeing these things, hearing these things, and as a result of that, that is create a, creating a measure of anxiety mm -hmm. within them. Right. So, as you, look, look at how you, as you see it, mm -hmm. it informs your mind. Right. And then you form, you're forming beliefs. Mm -hmm. People start believing that we're going to die. Right. They start saying, in no way, this thing is going to erupt. We're going to die. We're going to lose our houses. We're going to lose our animals. We're going to lose. You see how far we gone there now? Yes. yes. You, you get it? If I step out of my house, I would do the, I, listen, I can get COVID, I can do that. No. No, 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 no. As you think, as you open your mind, the way you start interpreting the news that you hear, for some people, some people can take it positively mm -hmm. to say, well, you know, this virus is dangerous. And if it is dangerous, then I need to take certain precautions. Exactly. That is very rational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, if I start now getting freeze up and, and become so fearful that, listen, I, I'm not going to work. I, I don't know it work. You understand? I, I, I start, if I see another human being, I run. Then you know that kind of thing. I, I am becoming a little irrational, mm -hmm. and that 
is going to just accentuate and feed in to my anxiety. Because it is, it is the same thing. It is, it is like the same wind that carries a ship to Beckway can bring a ship to St. Vincent. It is the way the sails are positioned. It is the same way they're thinking. This is, this is the power of the of the of the thinking how we how people are going to interpret the information that they are getting. Mm -hmm. If you interpret it in a negative way, boy, it's going to it's going to really and 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 you know sometimes the the thought could become a self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. We start speaking the worst on ourselves, and then. What we see around us, just like evidence that this thing is going to, is going to, is really going to, going to happen to us. That that is why I believe we always need the right people to interpret what we are seeing for us. Amen. Because think of it for a moment. When I saw the images um, Saturday, you know, all sort of things going through your mind. But then Nemo put out a statement. Yeah. And that in itself calmed the fear. Yes. Because you're saying now, oh, this is expected. But it, that, that is not how the information came out. That, wow, this is it. Right. You know? And people were thinking of leaving their homes. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at... Um, so you see, not cutting you. Perfect example you have given there. Mm -hmm. Because when I saw it, mm -hmm. I was expecting that. Okay. Because already I had that information. So now I'm seeing it. I am, I am saying, oh, that's what the scientist is talking about. The, the thing is, um, um, they, they call it a certain name. Um, yeah. uh, glow. Fluorescent. Yeah, fluorescent, yes. Fluorescent. fluorescent yes. So it's down in there. It looks dark during the day, but it is real. It will glow. It eventually, it will glow, and the people around the a volcano, Chateaubile, Rosal, and all of that on a clear night will see. So when I see those pictures, it didn't move my anxiety level no further than where it is because my thinking is a perfect example. <laughs> it is it is same picture that we saw that people became anxious and I didn't get anxious. Right. It's all in how we interpret yeah. The COVID nineteen and the threats and the spread and the volcano yes. and so on. My yes. time is gone. <laughs> time is time is gone. And and you know, but I, I want to leave you with um, Philippians four. He said, "Do not be anxious about anything. Mm -hmm. Read it because we are out of time. But in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God." Our request to God is, God, you got to help us with this virus. Yeah. God, you got to cause la souffrir not to erupt violently. Mm -hmm. You know, and the Bible say, when you have that, and the peace of God, mm -hmm. amen. Passage. With pass it, all understanding will, God will umpire your heart mm -hmm. and your mind. And look at again the key, and your mind. That our mind be covered by the peace of God because it is from our minds will flow anxiety or faith or trust. Well, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, we thank you um, for viewing and we trust that something we have said here today would have blessed your heart, ministered to you. And once again, we say this is a time. If you're a backslider, you don't know Jesus Christ, or you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time to repent and allow Jesus to be Lord and Master of your life. So on behalf of our General Bishop and myself, Stephen Olivier, do have a great evening. God bless you. Amen.